Hello and welcome to Euro PCR 2017. My name is Christopher Cook and it is my pleasure to be joined here by Antonio Micuri from Italy. He is a world expert in peripheral intervention and welcome to this PCR TV session entitled How to Treat Patients with Popliteal and Common Femoral Artery Lesions. Antonio, the peripheral track has grown from strength to strength each year at Euro PCR. My first question to you is what are the challenges that mark the treatment of patients with popliteal and common femoral artery lesions? Well, Christopher, I think this is a, a very important question uh, because uh, common, and, uh, common femoral artery and popliteal artery, anatomically speaking, are the bad conduits, are the worst part of uh, the vascular tree of the leg. Because at first, uh, are to bending zone, so we don't like at all to use prosthesis. So our aim is not to stand this patient, or if we need to use a stent, we need a dedicated stent for that first. Second, both of them are arteries, then are subjected to a lot of forces at the same time. That means that compression, flexion, torsion, together at the same time, will act at the, at the artery. And this determines the problems in terms of pathophysiology of rest stenosis and the progression of the disease. That's why, till now, they were considered for open surgery repair. Now something is changing due to the new technology and technique that we are applying to this uh, common and popliteal artery segment. Fantastic. I can see why it is such a, a challenging uh, arterial zone to work with. So can you perhaps tell us what devices and new treatment strategies allow you to tackle these types of lesions? Well, originally we started from the plain balloon, just a simple dilation with the plain balloon. But that was uh, not uh, uh, enough in terms of uh, short, mid and long term result because uh, what the rest stenotic rate was uh, not acceptable, was too high. So what we have at the moment, uh, we have uh, some debulking or scoring technique, that means directional adorectomy first, or some scoring balloon as angioscalp. Then we have some drug loading balloon, so a new technology, a balloon which contains some paclitaxel on it and can elute this paclitaxel on the vessel wall. Third, we have some dedicated stent in case we need to scaffold some very calcific lesion. Or the combination of this, because you can debulk the lesion with directional laterectomy and use the biological effect of the drug loading balloon to give more chance to patient to reduce the rest stenosis rate. So this is called combination therapy, mechanical effect plus biological effect of the drug loading balloon. And we have some initial result that are satisfactory, yet we don't have so many results, some evidence-based medicine, enough evidence-based medicine to say we have a solution, but we are working on that to improve the outcome and to give uh, an answer to scientific community in terms of uh, standard technique of treatment for this. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like a very ripe area of intervention for research to answer those questions that you just so nicely put. Now, perhaps you mentioned that these so-called no stent zones, do you think there will be developments in stent design that might allow them to conform to these regions? Well, <clears throat> at the moment, uh, uh, of course, uh, is uh, something uh, we would like to have a stent that, can, that has a conformability, flexibility to sit in the artery and follow up all the different uh, flexion or extension of the stent. At the moment, uh, we have some good data about the stent that is called, is named the super stent, is an inter stent uh, that is uh, quite nice and uh, result of different trial, randomized or registry, independent studies show with the patency that is around uh, in between 80 to 90% at one year in terms of, uh, of patency, that is very, uh, very, very high. And we have this study, especially in the popliteal artery, we have a few studies in the common, but this new technology could help us a lot in scaffolding the, 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 the artery and giving an affordable solution uh, for this artery. 
So there's been lots of developments. It sounds like there's lots of innovations uh, to come as well. So perhaps looking forward over the next five years, for example, do you think that popliteal and common femoral artery lesions are going to be increasingly treated percutaneously? Well, uh, my personal opinion at the moment, I can give you my personal opinion because, because we don't have data enough to answer in, uh, uh, with the support of data. But I strongly believe that this is the way. This is the way uh, because we started from uh, plain balloon. We are moving over years uh, with new technology. Results are coming, are improving. And uh, still we are working on that, improving and try to do something more. So I would expect not to have a competition between uh, open surgery and uh, endovascular intervention. But I would tell you that uh, they complementarily working together some even with some hybrid solution they will improve the outcome so the rate of endovascular treatment will grow for sure fantastic well thank you so much for your uh, expert opinion you've told us about the challenges involved in treating these lesions we've talked about the devices and the techniques and indeed the innovations that we all hope are in the pipeline to help these patients in the future thank you very much thank you appreciate it. thank you